everybody's human and everybody has the same insecurities that you do. Everybody has the same fears as you do. They just may be a little bit further out from where you are today on whatever it is that they're focused on. And I will tell you that the simple way to do it is you just have to keep doing. You have to realize that if you keep doing every single day, it will get better and better. All right, guys, what's up? Eric Beer here. Thank you for visiting the channel. Appreciate you being here. Um, today's episode, I don't have an agenda. Uh, I don't have anything planned out. I don't have any framework set up to start talking to you guys about. I just wanted to come on here today because I thought it was really important. And I know that entrepreneurs need to hear this because I had something that happened to me this week that was, uh, it's pretty powerful. Um, and I knew it, but it's just, it always, it just needs to continue to happen and happen and happen for me to a point where, um, it's reminders. Um, you know, everybody's human. We all, we all go through life and journey and we, we, we experience things. And when you're, when you're in it, when things are good and you're in it, it just seems like it's the easiest thing ever, right? And you kick butt. You just, you don't know how you can't be successful. But there's times where like things aren't working out as well. And it's really interesting when you think about it because it comes so easy when it's working well. And when it's not working well, it just seems like it's just, that much harder. And I think with COVID and everything that just took place in the last year and a half, I think it affected more people than I realized. And I'll tell you this, and I'll tell you why. So I went to Boise early this week, right? Um, Russell had a, a thing at ClickFunnels. He invited some of the people from the IC and some other people to come, and he was going over his perfect webinar. And uh, it was really great to go there. Like at first I wasn't sure if I was going to go or not with travel. And then just as crazy as it sounds, I had a little bit of a fear to, to leave. <laughs> um, I haven't traveled for business in, no, I don't know how long, a year and a half. And, uh, I just kind of got like set in my ways, like wake up in the morning, do my thing every day. Boom, 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 like clockwork. And I've been doing it for so long to a point where like I was afraid to like break that routine. And, because of that, I think that there's been a lot of things that have limited me into pushing myself to be uncomfortable. What I mean by that is that um, the only way you really could grow is when you do something that makes you uneasy is the way that I look at it, right? Like, um, for example, if you want to go on stage and you're scared, well, if you go on stage and you're scared you're uncomfortable. But if you go on stage, once you get there and you start talking and you start feeling comfortable, when you get off stage, you feel great. And you're like, oh, I can't believe I was, I was nervous for that. That was amazing. Um, wow. Right. But if you don't go on stage because of the fear and it stops you, then you never get that feeling. Does that make sense? So when I went to this uh, event down in Boise, it was great. Uh, I saw so many people I haven't seen in so long, All, a lot of people from the inner circle. Um, and I just, you forget how much motivation you get when you're around other people and, and you're around like-minded people that are doing similar things as you and you hear, what are they doing? What are they struggling with? Like, how are they coping? How are they seeing success? Where was there some failures? But just that conversation itself, just being in a room with people that are doing all the same things that you are, it's just, it's powerful. Uh, I don't know how else to describe it. Like the energy, the, the motivation, like it's like a regenerator. It's like a, you have a battery inside you and it's kind of low and you just got to go and recharge it. The thing that, that stood out to me was, because I know for me, I've been, I've been down on myself a little bit being like, come on, man, you're out of it a little bit. Um, it seems like a lot of people are super, super successful. People have, have gotten into some routine where they may have fallen outside what they were doing for the last X amount of years. And, uh, they're trying to get themselves back, trying to get themselves back on track to start working the way they did prior to COVID. And <laughs> listen, you, you never want to see anybody struggle whatsoever, right? 
but there is a sense of, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Belonging. I guess belonging would be a good word. A sense of belonging that, all right, I'm not the only one that was feeling that way. You know, some people were, are, were feeling way worse than I was uh, and haven't really done anything. And then there's others that, you know, um, struggling a little bit, just like me, and, and, and focusing on, you know, on creating content or, or building new offers or promotions or, you know, just pushing things out and, and scaling the business, right? Um, and, like, <laughs> the most powerful thing about it is, and this is the thing I wanted to, like, just come on and tell you guys about, because I know a lot of people here listening are you're entrepreneurs, right? You're trying to grow your business. Either you have a massive business and, and you're listening to me and you're just trying to pick up some ideas or, or maybe you're somebody that just doesn't have a business at all and you're trying to figure out how to like just get it going, just get it started. The takeaway that I want you to get from this episode is that everybody's human and everybody has the same insecurities that you do. Everybody has the same fears as you do. They just may be a little bit further out from where you are today on whatever it is that they're focused on. And I will tell you that the simple way to do it is you just have to keep doing. You have to realize that if you keep doing every single day, it will get better and better. If you keep chopping down the tree, just keep on just digging to get that hole, whatever comparison you want me to use. But the thing is persevering. And um, by you being able to persevere and not letting all that doubt hurt you will help you be successful. Okay? Some of the most successful people in the world have insecurities. They, uh, they, Tons of people that you would have been shocked with that you see on the internet and they have these great videos and all these followers and, and they just like, like, it looks like they're like killing it, right? Well, the, online doesn't tell it all. When you meet people in person, it's just like, oh my God, like they're human. You know, I'll give you another example of something that happened to me in my life where I realized this at an early age. And I think it's something that has helped me become successful and to raise the bar on what my goals are in life, right? And what I think I can attain and where I want to go, right? And it was when I was 17, going into my senior year, 17 going on to 18, I got selected for the junior Olympic team to play baseball. Uh, there was one of 64 kids in the country to get selected. It was a, it was a great honor. Um, only 12 kids in the country that played outfield were there, right? Three from the north, three from the south, Three from the West, three from the East. I'm from New York, so I was on the East team. Uh, everybody got shipped down to Texas, right? At that time, I had not heard of him, but there was a kid who was already drafted number one in the nation um, that was going there. Uh, he was 18. He was a senior. His name was Alex Rodriguez. And anybody that knows baseball knows A-Rod, right? And all the success he had. But before all that, he was an 18-year-old kid going to the trials to go play baseball. I was going to compete against him, right? And I just remember um, <laughs> flying out to Texas, and my dad came with me. Uh, thankfully, he came with me everywhere, and it was great. You know, like it was good support. But he couldn't come with me into all the meetings. They just kind of got thrown into the fire. And I remember the first day I got there, and we had to sit in this big room, and there was 64 kids. And you see some people that are just like jumping around, like laughing, looking like they knew each other forever, like super comfortable, having fun. And uh, I was just like sitting in my seat, just kind of like looking around, scared, <laughs> nervous, excited, all kinds of things. I was also thinking like, which one's Alex Rodriguez, uh, which was really cool. So like I'm kind of looking around and seeing some of the guys and I'm thinking, you know, a few of the guys that are jumping up and laughing and having a blast before it starts is him. Surprisingly, it wasn't. Alex actually was uh, really quiet, uh, sitting down in the back of the room, just kind of minding his own business, focused, getting ready. And I thought that was really interesting, being that he was the best player in the country at that time. Um, he had already been selected as the number one draft pick for the Seattle Mariners. 
And he also had a full ride going to the University of Miami. And it was the summer before, and he had to make that decision. But so, in any event, the point is, once we got going, there were people there. Some felt comfortable, some not. Everybody there was super talented. And the first day out, we started to go and take batting practice. We were catching balls in the field, just kind of going into a rotation. And, I mean, nervous isn't even a word I could describe. Um, there was this feeling inside of me that was, yes, nervous, but there was this almost like this, this high of like excitement, of like opportunity, of, of just like, wow, like pinch yourself kind of thing. Like, dude, like this is, this is great. You know, like make this thing work. And all of a sudden I, I started to feel pressure on myself and I started to like really like want to do well for this. There was like 250 pro scouts or 250 colleges at this thing. There was tons of people. We were in San Antonio, Texas. Uh, it was really hot. It was the summer. I think like on the field, it was like 115 degrees. It was, <laughs> it was hot. Um, and these guys were taking batting practice and all I hear is, <laughs> and these guys are like mashing the ball, like just crazy mashing the ball. And they were big guys. I was probably one of the smallest guys there. Um, at the time, I think I weighed hmm, about 155 pounds. I was 5'11", um, and I was tiny compared to these guys. They, and they were just mashing. And with every swing of the bat, I like crumbled because I was looking at how far they were hitting the ball. Like, just it was unfathomable, right? Like, think of Alex Rodriguez going to a cage with a metal bat. Not a wood bat, a metal bat, and just taking batting practice. I mean, balls were flying. It, it might have gone over two two baseball fields. I mean, it, it was just massive, massive. And um, I started to doubt myself. Like, do I do I belong here? I hadn't taken one swing. I have not even been on the field yet, and I I had doubt in my mind. I started to get scared. I started to think, oh, I can't do this. How am I gonna How am I gonna do this? Right and it really messed me up. Um, and I'll tell you something that I did that really worked, which was I took everything that I had for preparation and I went and I focused on me. I stopped watching other people hit. I went, I watched me and only me. Because by watching other people and the success they were having, it was hurting me because it was making me feel like I have to be like them. But I got there because of who I am, how I played. I was selected because I was a pretty good player, right? I'm not them. But because I'm watching them and seeing all the success they're having, I'm thinking I, I have to be. And now what's going to happen is if I start to try to do what they do, which I can't do, right? It's just not my game. I'm going to fail. I'm going to try to do something outside the realm of what I'm good at. And I'm going to fail. And the moment I was able to just turn off everybody else and focus on me, everything changed. I hit, I did well, but in my own way. Maybe I was a guy that hit line drives over shortstop. Maybe I was the fast guy that could steal bases. Maybe I was the intelligent guy, right? Baseball IQ. Just a lot of things that you bring to the table that are different than somebody that can just mash a ball over the fence, right? And I did all right. You know, I did, I did, did all right. I held my own um, when I was in the cage and, and when I was throwing, I was, I was there. Like, I belonged there. It wasn't like, uh, oh, that kid sticks out. He's, he doesn't belong here. And it was really like a powerful thing for me to realize really early in my life on how to try to be successful in high pressure situations where you don't let the moment define you. And it really is just staying within yourself and focusing on who you are, what you're good at, and just knowing your stuff, knowing who you are, knowing what you're good at, and then just doing it step by step. That's what got you there. You focus there and you will be successful. If you try to be somebody else, that's where you get into trouble. And um, that worked out well. But the thing I'm, I'm you know, I, I, I noticed was 
even A-Rod was insecure. I mean, Paul Canerco was there, right? Another another home run leader in the American League. At one point, I think it was uh, Alex Rodriguez, Paul Canerco, and Mark Texier were the top three uh, leaders in home runs in the AL at one point in the major leagues. And I played with all three of them, right? And it was just, it was kind of cool. Um, at that time, I was done playing baseball and uh, in the working world. But it was just, it's cool to to be associated with those types of people, right? And when you see there's three people in the world that are leading the entire American League in home runs, and you were somebody that stepped on a field with those kind of people, it gives you this sense of, well, if they're successful, why can't I be successful? At one point in our lives, we were competing against each other. Some of these guys on my team, when I would talk to them, were more insecure than I was. If I didn't talk to them, I had no idea. No idea. This one kid, it was a first round draft pick for the Montreal Expo at the time, and he had this like, he was huge and strong, and he had this like, this mean face. Like, he wasn't mean, but he just looked scary. Like, I was like, you don't want to walk past this guy or be on his bad side. And meanwhile, like, as I got to know him, I mean, I can't, he couldn't have been nicer. Like, like the opposite of mean. And it was just wild to me. And then as I got to talking with them, um, he had gotten an injury that he was a third baseman, got pushed over to first base. Uh, they looked at him as he was going to be like George Brett, but now because of what happened with his injury, he's got to move to first, he's going to play first. I mean, the guy mashes, but he was so scared. First round draft pick. George Brett, they were comparing him to. If anybody knows baseball, like one of the greatest players, greatest third baseman, right? He's the guy that ran out of the dugout after they uh, said the cork bat incident, which is really cool. You should YouTube that if you don't see it, where he hits a home run with a wood bat, and then they check the bat, and after they, they say, oh, it's Cork, it's not a home run anymore, they call him out, and he's come storming out of the dugout and like like crazy on the Empire. Uh, yeah, YouTube it, it's pretty funny. Uh, always fun to watch. But the point is, is like, this kid was scared. First round draft pick. Going to be in the major leagues no matter what. These guys were the best at their trade. At this time, at 17 and 18 year olds, there were 64 of the top players in the country. And every one of us was competing against one another. And we were all insecure. We were all scared. We all had fear. But that's what drove us to be excellent. And the same thing that happened in Boise was, which was really interesting, most of the people there were from the inner circle, but there were a few people that were not. There were a few people in the room that were not. And at the end, we went around the room and, and each person talks about their takeaway, right? Like we two days of just learning a ton of stuff. Like what was the number one thing that you learned today? We went around the room and we got to this one person and I didn't know her. And she gets the microphone and she's, she's like crying. <laughs> and um, I was kind of like, holy, holy wow. Like some people make jokes and have fun and like, you know, they're comfortable in, in this setting. Um, it's been my like fourth or fifth meeting there being with everybody. So I felt more comfortable than the first time. And um, but I still, you know, you still get nervous every time to talk in front of people. And I spoke about what my takeaway was. And uh, it got to this girl and she started crying. And everybody was taken back. And she's like, <laughs> she's just like naming people in the room, like, just unbelievable, like Russell Brunson, right? Um, she's like, you know, Rachel Peterson and uh, starts naming a bunch of other people. And she's been watching all these people online for so long and they're all so successful. She's been struggling with her business. And she said something that was just like, wow. She's like, I, I, you guys are real people. Like, I, I can't believe it. And what happened was, by her being in this environment and being around people that are super, super successful, but seeing that they, they're just real human beings like everyone else here, gave her the confidence and for her to realize that she can do it too. <laughs> and she was like, her aha was like, oh my God, like for the first time, I really believe I can do it. And it was all around just believing in herself, right? And it was just the fact that she, she put people on these pedestals that are successful, like they're, they're superheroes, superheroes, right? Like it's not the case. All us 
entrepreneurs, we're all the same, right? We're all in different stages of our lives or our business. We may go about it a little bit differently. We may have different personalities, but we all, we all wake up in the morning and we all have our same insecurities in one way or another. And the way that you got to handle it is you got to understand it's normal and you got to face those fears. And and the sooner you do, the sooner I believe that you'll be successful with whatever it is you want to do, whether it's you starting a new business or even in your existing business, if you're trying to just kind of get it going or growing it or or maybe pivoting to do something different. But um, I just think my takeaway on that was it seemed like she was putting like a a ceiling on on what she could do or uh, how successful she can be or if she really can do this and there was this doubt. And by just seeing like that other people have some doubt and it's just the way that she thought about it was there's no way, but now she's hearing that this person was, you know, struggling a little bit to get back, back going with, with whatever it is that they were doing. It gave her confidence. And she was just like, I can do this too. And like, she said, I can do this. I, I, I know now I can do this. And it was, it was, it was really like powerful for me because she, didn't change at all. Like she was the same person, but it was all around her just realizing it for herself on her journey that, um, yeah, you can. And she believed in herself. And it was just, I don't know, for me, it, it, it was just uh, really powerful because I think that a lot of people do that. I think a lot of people stop themselves from being successful. I think that there are times where I believe in people more than they believe in themselves around my life. I know that for sure. Like I, I'm an optimist. I believe you could do anything you want. I mean, you got to work hard. You got to put your mind to it and, and go after it. But if you don't give up, I believe you can attain almost anything you want. I mean, could I play center for an NBA basketball team? Probably not. Right. Cause I just, I'm not tall enough. Right. But that's silly. Right. But within some capacity, if you want to do something, I believe you can do it. I believe most things are teachable. There's, there's models out there every day of your life in anything you do. And if you see somebody that's successful and you really just sit down and kind of just be a detective, right? Serve a detective, little plug. <laughs> but if you be a detective, if you just watch, see how they go about doing it, it's not as crazy as you seem. They're not. They're not geniuses. They're not these wizards. They just been doing whatever it is that's working for them for a really long time. And now it comes easy to them. So like I said earlier on, like I didn't have an agenda today. There's no frameworks. There's no, you should do this or that because everybody has their own journey. But I did want to hit on that. You can do this. I, for one, feel re-energized just going there. Forget about what I learned. Forget about the people I saw. It was good. It was really healthy for me to just, you know, get myself back up and going and excited for myself. It was just in, internally just being motivated to do certain things, right? And, and be excited about stuff. And the only thing that was stopping me was me. The only thing that's stopping you is you. I, I hate to tell you that. Because a lot of people like to point fingers that I'm not doing something because of this or because of that or because of the minute you take responsibility of it's on you, you'll be that much closer to being successful. Because at the end of the day, it, making, making excuses does nothing. If it's that you don't understand something, well, then you just got to keep on going at it until you do understand it. If it's working, if somebody's doing it and it's working, and you just can't comprehend it, just if you go in and try to understand it for one time or two times and you don't get it or five times, you got to understand that the person that's doing it, they've probably been doing it for 10 years, 15 years, right? Like it's hard for you to see them when they were like that, where they didn't get it because now it just seems like, oh my God. And then, then you call that person a genius or an expert. And the funny thing is, and I can guarantee you this, 
in my personal opinion, based on me just explaining that when you see famous people, they're, they're human. When you see, um, super successful people, they're human, right? They've all been through it in their journeys, different, but they all are human. The people that are super successful and you look at them as these experts, yes, they're smart. Yes, you know, bow to them. But it really is just a matter of them just repeating what they've been doing over and over and over and over and over until they got it right. And they continue to just polish their craft. And then when you go and talk to them with you not knowing anything, you look at them like, oh my God, how do you know that? Holy, whoa. It's because they've been doing it forever. If you want to be like that and you put the time and effort in, you'll be like that. It might take you six months. It might take you a year. It might take you four or five years. We're all different, but you can do it. Right. <laughs> you know, it's like, I'll just tell you one last, like, funny thing that I had, which was, you know, I've been playing a little bit of golf lately, right? Like, first time getting out, I've been playing a little bit of golf. And I used to be pretty good. Uh, two years ago, I was, I was all right. You know, like, I wasn't unbelievable, but I could hold my own. I was probably anywhere from like a 10 to 12 handicap. You know, I'd play from the back, the tips, and I'd shoot anywhere from like, you know, on really good days, the low 80s to like, high 80s. Anything above 90, I was I was disappointed with. One time I shot a 79. I remember when I put the score in the, the machines, like, are you sure you want to put this in? Because they, if it's like a score that's different than most of the other scores you put in, they, they stop you and just confirm. And I'm like, yeah, I want to put that in. And I remember taking a picture being like, I was psyched. You know, that was a big day for me. And I stopped playing um, during COVID, took off a year. And um, I got back into it in the fall before 2021. So at the end of 2020, I started playing a little bit in the fall. And then we, we had a gap in New York. It's cold. So we stopped and I came back. And ever since I came back, I've been like terrible, <laughs> like terrible. Uh, I, I couldn't break 90. Uh, a few times I, I had hundreds and like, uh, I'm like, what's going on here? It's like a little embarrassing. And, and, you know, and I thought to myself, like, well, why do you think you should be good? You think you're just going to roll out of bed and be good? You haven't played in a year and a half? And when you play, you play once a week? Do you think that, you think that people that are good just come and, and play once a week? And, and then when you play, you don't even practice. You just go to the course and, and just play 18 holes and expect to be good? I mean, when I was good in baseball, I got good because I just kept on swinging the bat every single day. I practiced every day, took hundreds of swings. Maybe I took a few days off here and there, but it was muscle memory, right? Same thing as like, you learning something in business, my body learned certain things that I needed to do. And over time, if I kept doing it, and it just came natural to me, it wasn't natural, like I was born with it. But it was drilled into my body. And <laughs> it's funny, because I, I started to take a few lessons with my, my pro at my club. This guy, Jim, he's great. He really understands the, the golf swing. And for me, I need somebody to explain that to me so that if I'm them playing and I do something wrong, I need to understand why I did something wrong. Meaning like if I'm trying to hit the ball straight and the ball's going to the left, I want to know why it went left. It's something I did. People always complain, oh, this, the, the ball's going that way because you're hitting it that way. I don't know why, right? Like, but I can tell you one thing that the club is facing that way if it's going that way. It's, you know, it's not rocket science. If it was facing that way to go that way, right? That's the simple part of it. But really there's the whole, the whole swing, right? There's, there's a science to it. And, you know, after a few lessons, he's shown me some things. And every time after I took a lesson, the next day I was better. And then I took off a week and I was terrible for about a week. When I went back to play, I shot, I think, 101, 101. And like, I don't even know. Wait, I don't even know if I put the score in that last time. And, and just losing my matches, I was upset. And then I was thinking to myself, like, you know, if you want to be good, you probably should go and practice. I know, crazy. And um, I was playing the following day. So what I did was that night, I went to the driving range. And I just spent an hour just hitting the ball. I worked on just slowly hitting the ball. Took a few clubs out, was testing here and there, just hitting the ball. Guess what? On one day of practice, I went out 
I think I shot an 84. And it could have been in the high 70s if a few things went my way. And it may not sound like a big difference, but from 101 to 84, that's massive. That's, that's massive, especially when you're playing with handicaps, if you're playing against somebody else and you're getting strokes. And it was just from one day of practice. So it's like, I joke all the time with guys like, I don't think this game is that hard, but, but you're terrible, Eric. I know. I know. It's funny that I say that, right? Because I'm terrible and I'm, I'm telling you, I don't think it's that hard. And the reason why I don't think it's that hard is because I think that if you put the time and energy into practice, I'm not saying you're going to go and, and be on the tour and be shooting below 70 in the 60s, but you can, you can pick your score up and be very, very good very, very quickly if you just practice. Listen, understand what you need to do, learn, right? I go to a pro, I learn what I need to do. The same way, like, if you want to learn something in business, you go to a coach and, and they teach you whatever their skill set is, whatever their framework is. And then once he shows me the right way to do it, then I go and I practice it. Now, my body's not used to it, right? So I just have to keep on doing the same thing, and the same motions, the right way. And I may not see success the first time, but over time, if I continue to do that, if I go to the driving range and just keep on hitting the way that he showed me, I have no doubt in my mind I will easily be a 10 or 15 stroke better golfer just on that alone. The fact that I can go out and just hit a ball without having to think about my hands, my arms, my legs, what am I doing? And instead, I'm thinking about, all right, well, the hole's there. I want to, you know, maybe I'll keep the ball to the left because I can put it there now. I can put it where I want and stay out of trouble. So I'm thinking about how to score and how to play the game rather than thinking about how to just swing and hit, right? The mechanics of it. And it's the same thing in, in business, right? So in business, you know, there's the, you have to learn how to do it, right? The skill sets, all, all of the, the, the mechanics to get from A, B, C, D, E, whatever, whatever that framework is. But at some point then, it has to come pretty natural to you to where you're focusing on the strategy of being successful. The understanding like that, that the unspoken of, all right, I know what to do. I understand what to do. The mechanics of it, I understand. But you still need to understand the strategy of it. People know the frameworks. They follow the frameworks and they're still not successful because you don't understand each step in the framework of why you're doing it. It's like if the ball's going left, I want to know why it's going left. I know that my, my club's facing that way, but what am I doing that's making the ball go left if I want it to go straight? And in the frameworks, when you're trying to learn, it's the same thing, right? Within the mechanics, like A, B, C, D, E, right? And you're doing whatever in those flows. You need to understand it. Like, why are you doing it? Ask yourself why. If you can't answer that question, it's going to be hard for you to be successful. But when you can understand it and explain why you're doing each step, that's where you start to become the master. That's where you start to now innovate, right? You know the baseline. You understand what you're trying to accomplish. And that's where growth comes. That's where the, the part inside you that no one else has is just sprinkled onto that, that framework. And that's where it gets really, really special. And that's how you can now innovate off of somebody else's framework and make it your own. So I'm rambling on, guys. Uh, but I just wanted to come on here because I just, you know, I felt like it was a gift for me to be there and, and just kind of like get this mindset back. And I wanted to... uh hopefully touch somebody that's struggling out there that's just getting in their own way. So everybody's human. Remember that. Uh, what you're feeling, plenty of people are feeling. And that's okay, right? You can do this. You can do it. You just have to set your mind to make it happen. If you, if you need to, to, to reset it, maybe break your routine. For me, that was huge. I said it to my wife when I was on the airplane. I'm like, wow, Al, like just me flying from New York to Boise, um, my mindset, it was healthy for me to just get out of that everyday routine. It was really healthy. And when I come back, it almost like starts over. So now it's like giving me the ability to just, you know, start some new things, right? And, and keep that momentum. 
don't fall back into like some of the things that I was doing that I recognize maybe weren't helpful for me. And I said, you know, we, we got to do this more often. I was like, you got to do this. You got to like just go somewhere. Just out of your routine for a little bit just to to reset your mind it's super powerful right um plus it also makes you appreciate what you have i think a lot of people um they start to not realize what they have and they uh they focus on the things they want but they it's hard to stop and look around and see like oh my god like this is wow actually i uh, you know i'm doing okay doing way more than okay right you have a family of kids but you're, you're, you're so anxious about the financial side of the business or, or growing your bit, whatever that is, and you like lose sight of that. And then when you get away from it, for me, I got for two days, I mean, I got to tell you, like, not that I don't appreciate my family, but it was super powerful for me. Like just how lucky, how much I love them. And uh, it's I didn't need to go away to realize that, but like, it really like it just hit me when I wasn't with them for for two days, um, and I was I've been with them since COVID. I feel like every day for the last like four hundred days, right in a row, um, and uh, yeah, I'm just thankful. So I just wanted to push this message out to all of you performance marketers, to all you entrepreneurs, to all of you guys out there, whether it's business or something else. It's a relationship. It's your marriage. It's uh, you know you know dealing with your kids or, or maybe, you know, a cousin, family. It doesn't have to be just you performing in business, right? There's performance in you being a husband or wife. You can step up and be you of who you are or sometimes, you know, lose that a little bit. And it's, you need a wake-up call and be your best you. And when you're your best you, you're pretty, pretty good, right? Like, you know you're good. It's just how do you maintain that? And it's possible. It, it is. And if you think you lost it, you did not. You did not. People don't change. You don't look. If you did something in the past that now you're like, oh, I don't even know how I did that. And then you're insecure. And you don't think you could do it anymore. <laughs> and I get that. That's very, very natural, right? Oh, I was younger than I can. I promise you. That's you. You're competing against yourself right now. It's like your doppelganger, whatever that thing is. That's you. You did it. You can still do that. Just whatever you did in the past, whatever you were successful with, you worked hard to get there. And now you may forget that part that you worked so hard when you got there and you had success and, and you, you hit the finish line and woohoo. And now you want to just think you can go and do it today. You still got to work hard to get back to that, but you can do it. I can guarantee you can do it. You were the one who did it last time. If you've already done it, then that's, that's an easy one, right? You just kind of just got to go back and figure it out for yourself, but you can do it. And if you haven't done it, just keep going, man. You, you, it's possible. Uh, but so I'm going to stop rambling. Uh, I hope that this message is going to touch somebody. Uh, one person that if it touches you and it does, and, and you guys feel like I feel, let me know, you know, comment, comment below. Let me know what your, what your thoughts are. Yeah. You know, if you, if you, at some point in time felt like this. And if you have any solutions that worked, you know, I'd love to hear it, right? I'm always, I'm, I'm very coachable. I love hearing like other people's ways of finding success. That's, that's really helpful for me. And then, you know, for me, I just, I like to look at it and then, and then how I perceive it, I'll go about using some of those strategies, but in my own way, right? But so guys, everybody's human. You can do it. So good luck out there. Appreciate your time. Thanks for watching. Subscribe. If you haven't subscribed, like it. Push it to somebody that may need this, that it could be helpful for. If they don't know it's out there, get them to watch this, listen to this. And uh, yeah, just just keep being you. So all right, guys. Uh, with that said, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go and uh, have some fun with my family. So, peace out, guys.